morning students uh, today we will uh, discuss an example of the grand canonical ensemble and i am taking the example of an ideal gas which is basically a system with continuous degrees of freedom so in the last lecture we had done the theoretical uh, formulation of this uh, very important ensemble that is going to be used in quantum statistics and this is the ensemble of constant chemical potential volume and temperature <coughs> and just to recall the important results um, this temperature t was controlled by allowing exchange of energy with the reservoir okay and uh, volume was kept fixed by using fixed walls and the chemical potential was uh, kept fixed by allowing number of particles you know allowing for exchange in the number of particles between the system and the reservoir. So, delta n and delta a represent here exchange of the thermodynamic variable. <coughs> so, we had drawn a schematic uh, in the last lecture which applies in the present case as well. Uh, so, this is our system and uh, this is in contact with a reservoir whose whose purpose is to keep our system at a constant temperature and chemical potential. So, let us indicate the exchange of energy between the reservoir and the system uh, that maintains my temperature T and uh, indicate the uh, number of particles that are exchanged between the system and the reservoir and that maintains my chemical potential and I have uh, fixed walls. So, that maintains a uh, constant V ok. So, there are three variables mu V and T that are maintained uh, using this uh, technique or using this reservoir uh, this, using this uh, ensemble ok. So, now I am going to take a system which is a uh, an ideal gas. So, ideal gas has a working uh, I would say as a working uh, example. Now, you know an ideal gas uh, is basically a system whose microstate is uh, represented uh, uh, at any instant as <coughs> as nothing but the set of uh, positions and momentum ok, where uh, the positions are all uh, inside the box of volume V that does not uh, you know uh, uh, move and all the momenta are basically uh, allowed to take values between uh, uh, minus infinity to plus infinity the extreme values that are uh, uh, excluded. Now, <coughs> one has to keep in mind that this is a system where n is constantly varying. So, the microstate is now jointly represented by the set of q i's and p i's such that my i the index of the particle is between 1 and n nu precisely uh, meaning that the number of particles in the muth microstate is also a number that fluctuates ok. So, you cannot just use nu as your microstate you have to use a, a, a doublet of a, a microstate that is a set of q and p but with number of particles being n nu. So, this is the these, this uh, this doublet here jointly represents a microstate ok. So, now I am going to uh, write down the <coughs> probability density function. So, the probability density function uh, 
like we saw in the uh, last uh, class was written for a discrete system, but uh, here we have to make sure that uh, the PDF has the dimensions of 1 upon phase space volume. So, I am going to write the uh, probability of uh, finding the system in uh, microstate nu uh, probability density with number of particles n nu is uh, basically 1 upon n nu factorial. This is to accommodate the fact that for each microstate which has n nu particles, there are precisely n nu factorial permutations which are absolutely identical because the particles are indistinguishable. So, one has to divide this by n nu factorial so as to avoid over counting of the microstates. Okay. So, this uh, factorial n reminds us of this over counting that we have to avoid. Now, I am also going to take the cell factor h to the power 3 n nu where h is the our familiar action having the dimensions of angular momentum and this solely exists here to enable us to count the number of microstates. So, I have some sort of a volume that I am going to very soon take and in that volume the resolution the highest resolution or the smallest cell factor that I can accommodate is h to the power 3 n and hence uh, I can do a counting of the microstates. So, this cell factor is basically um, uh, it serves two purpose one is that it uh, enables us to count second it makes our uh, partition function dimensionless. Okay. So, then I have to take the uh, our uh, Boltzmann factor e to the power minus beta and the relevant energy scale of the problem. The relevant energy scale of the problem is the Hamiltonian corresponding to the microstate that we are focusing okay, minus the chemical work which is uh, the chemical potential that is held constant by the reservoir into the number of particles in that microstate. So, our total energy scale is not the internal Hamiltonian alone which would have been the case if this was a just a, uh, a canonical ensemble. <coughs> but here over and above the internal Hamiltonian you have a chemical work that is done by the reservoir to keep the chemical potential constant. Now, this is the Boltzmann factor obviously, this is not normalized. So, I have to divide it by the norm which is our partition function and that is nothing but the grand canonical partition function. So, so, this completes my probability density function for the uh, system in the grand canonical uh, ensemble. Now, I have to find out the partition function for the simple reason that if you remember we had uh, in the last lecture derived the connection between uh, statistical mechanics and uh, thermodynamics as uh, this very beautiful relationship in the form of an energy scale which we called as the grand potential. given as uh, minus k t or minus 1 over beta logarithm of the grand canonical potential. <coughs> Why does this provide a connection with uh, statistical mechanics and thermodynamics is because the grand canonical potential or the grand potential is also related to thermodynamic quantities by this relationship that is the definition that we have adopted okay, for the grand potential. So, I can connect equation 2 and equation 3 to compute various uh, important uh, properties of my ideal gas and in this lecture I shall demonstrate how to, how to do it because this is as a, as a this is being taken as a uh, this task is being taken as a working example. So, let us look at equation 1, 2 and 3. 
from equation 1 I can work out an expression for the partition function because this is a norm of the probability density function. So, if you can obtain the partition function for the classical ideal gas under grand canonical ensemble, you can then use equation 2 and 3 to connect the statmec with thermodynamics. So, the first task is to compute partition function. Okay. So, let us compute the partition function. then we shall be in the position to utilize equation 2 and 3. So, compute the partition function and this is very simple look at the form of equation 1. To normalize my PDF partition function here has to be sum over all the degrees of freedom, the degrees of freedom here being momenta and position there is one more degree of freedom which is n nu number of particles in the particular microstate. So, you have to sum over n nu also. Okay. So, I am going to sum over all possible. So, this is a, if you wish to say this is some kind of a restricted integral that is going to come inside. So, I am going to sum my n u from 0 to infinity okay, and take the entire uh, numerator inside. So, this would be like 1 upon n u factorial into 1 upon h to the power 3 n u and like we did for the discrete case we had a restricted sum inside I will have a restricted integral. So, for each n u that is outside I <coughs> will sum over all my degrees of freedom in that n u. Okay. So, let me take some more space here to indicate what I mean by this uh, restricted integral. So, now this is uh, integral over my entire phase space. Okay. So, I have integral over all coordinates position coordinates and momentum coordinates subject to the criterion that my position coordinates are all inside the box V and my momentums are all between minus infinity to plus infinity. So, I am allowing for all the possible momentas. So, the integral limits on the momentum are going from minus infinity to plus infinity for each component of the momentum. Okay. And uh, naturally I have uh, all the, the, the momentum uh, uh, volume and the you know coordinate volume. So, let me indicate that with this product symbol. So, here the product symbol would be some j going from 1 to n and I will have a d cube q j and I will have a d cube p j for all n particles. So, this is a volume element for the n particle system into the Boltzmann factor which is here. Now, the Boltzmann factors uh, chemical work has to be taken outside because that is independent of position and uh, uh, momentum. So, that comes outside. So, which gives us just e to the power beta mu n nu that comes outside it is independent of position and momentum and what is left over is just e raise to minus beta <coughs> into the Hamiltonian. Look here Hamiltonian of the mu th microstate. And this is an ideal gas, which means its Hamiltonian is purely kinetic. So, uh, observing that the Hamiltonian of our ideal gas is purely kinetic in nature, I will write down the uh, Hamiltonian, which is uh, I am going to use a uh, um, let us say some i going from 1 to n p i square by 2 m. Okay. Now, if you recall, so this is basically my grand canonical uh, partition function. So, I am going to write down the first few prefactors which is uh, n nu going from 0 to infinity 1 upon n nu factorial e to the power beta nu n nu over h to the power 3 n u and uh, 
if you see the momentum integrals here can be performed independently with the position integrals ok. Each particles momentum integral which is d cube q will simply give me a volume ok. So, this is exactly the canonical partition function that we have already computed ok. So, each momentum degree of freedom when integrated in 3 dimension will give me 2 pi m by beta to the power uh, uh, 1 half and because there are 3 n such uh, momentum coordinates it will give me uh, the power of 3 n by 2. So, I am going to write down first the position contribution to this integral which is simply uh, I can I can either write down the result directly or I can do it in 2 steps. So, let us do it in 2 steps. So, I will write down the momentum and position integrals separately. So, let us do it for the position integral it is nothing but uh, integral for uh, uh, let us say some particle uh, 1 ok in the box uh, v t cube uh, q 1 and uh, there are precisely n such integrals. So, this is to the power n and for the momentum I can write down uh, integral um, I can write it as uh, integral 3 integrals I will write down. Uh, so, I can write down as uh, p 1 some momentum belonging to the range minus infinity to plus infinity uh, d cube uh, p 1 e to the power minus uh, p 1 square by 2 m ok and again there are n such integrals into beta of course ok. Now, this can be written as uh, summation n u going from 0 to infinity 1 upon n u factorial into 1 upon h to the power 3 n nu into e raise to beta mu n nu. The volume integrals will simply give me v to the power n e to the power n u of course ok and the similarly the either the summation here goes from 1 to n u and the product also goes from 1 to n u absolutely absolutely yes ok. And uh, so, this is v to the power n u because this is the number of particles in the nth microstate which is summed over outside ok and the momentum integrals will simply give me 2 pi m over beta to the power 3 by 2 and there is a so this is the momentum integral that is written inside the bracket and there is an n u outside. So, I am going to write it as a 3 by 2 n u each degree of freedom will give me 2 pi m by beta half to the raised to the power half there are 3 degrees of freedom. So, it gives me 2 pi m by beta raised to 3 half and there are n u such integrals. So, the overall result is 3 n u by 2 ok. You could also say that ok this part is purely a remnant from the canonical partition function and I will agree to it. Okay, that reminds us the canonical partition function. Nevertheless, uh, we can uh, proceed from here and uh, compute uh, write down the final form of it. So, I am going to uh, club a few things here and there. So, why do not we write it as uh, n u going from 0 to infinity v to the power n u divided by n factorial and I am going to write down e to the power uh, beta mu n u and h I am going to take inside and write it as uh, 2 pi m over h square to 
to the power uh, 2 pi m upon beta h square to the power uh, 3 n nu by 2 okay. and uh, realizing that uh, our uh, 2 pi m by beta h square to the power half is nothing but uh, 1 upon de Broglie wavelength which means uh, uh, 2 pi m if I raise it to the power 3 this becomes just uh, de Broglie wavelength to the power 3. Okay. So, then I can uh, rewrite my previous expression as uh, I can just take the common power n and multiply all these uh, factors. So, what I will get is basically V into e raise to beta mu divided by lambda t to the power 3 okay. and uh, the entire thing raised to the power n nu into 1 upon n nu factorial. Fine. So, you know that uh, this uh, summation x raise to n divided by n factorial. Okay, so, if you recall that this is nothing but uh, an expression for e to the power x. Okay. So, I can write down my uh, partition function or I can write down uh, my grand canonical partition function. So, I can write down my grand canonical partition function as nothing but uh, e to the power v e raise to beta mu over lambda t to the power 3. Okay. So, now I have the partition function for the classical ideal gas under a grand canonical ensemble. So, now I can uh, develop uh, all uh, thermodynamic quantities very easily because uh, look at this z is already with me now. So, if you go back and look at the expressions 2 and 3, <coughs> the equation 2 will allow me to construct the grand potential and grand potential is related to all the quantities s, mu and pressure through the uh, equation number 3. Okay. So, let us first compute the grand potential. Okay. So, the grand potential here is uh, nothing but uh, So, the grand potential is nothing but uh, minus 1 upon beta logarithm of uh, our uh, grand canonical uh, partition function. So, this would be nothing but uh, minus uh, k b t into ln of this is nothing but uh, v e raise to beta mu over lambda t to the power 3. Okay natural log of the exponent is nothing but uh, 1. So, now let us call this as equation 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this is our uh, grand potential. So, if you look at equation 3 here, okay, so I am just going to write down the equation 3. But we know that uh, xi is equal to T minus uh, T s minus uh, mu n. So, I am going to take a small differential 
and uh, that is how I develop uh, all connections. Fine. And then you can substitute for uh, d e minus t d s minus mu d n from first law. You can substitute for this as uh, minus p d v. Okay, because from the first law we know that. Uh, the way we have been writing in our first law is that uh, the heat uh, supply to the system is always taken as the uh, increase in internal energy. Suppose you give heat to the system, it will lead to increase in the internal energy. System may also do some work. So, both, they are both of them are taken as positive. Work done by the system and internal energy is rise plus uh, there is some uh, contribution that comes from chemical uh, uh, interaction. If you allow particles to leave the system or enter the system, then you have mu dn. Otherwise, you just have d e and p d v. Okay. So, ours is a grand canonical ensemble. So, we allow for three different ways in which heat given to a system can manifest. It can increase the internal energy, which is d e, heat up the particles. The system may, you know, um, expand or contract, and the system may um, may may actually uh, allow for some exchange of particles. So, that is mu d n. Now, we can uh, we can now compute uh, all these quantities. So, I can compute uh, the pressure. This is what we mean by computing thermodynamic quantities. So, hence the thermodynamic quantities are pressure which is nothing but uh, negative uh, d psi by d v at constant mu and t and uh, I can compute entropy as negative d psi by d t at constant uh, v and mu and I can also compute uh, number of particles as negative d psi by d mu at constant volume and temperature. Okay. So, if you have the expression with you, you can compute all these things. So, minus k t I am going to write down uh, minus k t v So, let us just write down the expression for the grand canonical uh, potential. Is that it? Yes. Okay. So, therefore, I can write down uh, for P pressure as uh, so the only thing that is uh, uh, basically there is only one variable that is uh, volume in the expression. So, it is simply minus uh, minus turns into positive because there is already a minus sign in the grand potential. So, it is simply k t e raise to beta mu over lambda t the whole cube. Okay. So, as you can see this is the pressure of the our gas 
at uh, constant mu v t conditions. So, I am going to sort of uh, underline it. This is the first expression for uh, pressure. Okay. You can compute the entropy which is basically uh, temperature derivative. So, then basically we have to be careful with the temperature derivative. So, what comes out is basically just the Boltzmann constant and the volume. So, I am going to first uh, uh, write down the temperature derivative of uh, T e raise to beta mu over lambda T to the power 3. Okay. So, K B into Boltzmann constant will come out. So, we can uh, we can do it uh, in, in uh, a few steps. So, so we will first write it as uh, T e raise to beta mu into so I'm going to write it as uh, okay plus Okay. So, this will be nothing but uh, so this will give me plus Okay. This is our first product. So, e raise to beta mu when taken derivative for temperature uh, just returns e raise to beta mu and uh, mu by k b is a factor and 1 over t is derivative is uh, minus 1 over t square and our this is not yet complete. So, I will take the second derivative as well and uh, here uh, noting that uh, uh, our uh, lambda t is uh, I can write it as uh, minus 3 upon lambda t to the power 4 okay, into d by d t of uh, lambda t. Okay. Fine. So, this is uh, then uh, so what I will take out is basically uh, lambda t to the power 3 outside. Okay. In fact, I can take quite a few things outside. So, what I am going to take outside is basically so, I can take e raise to beta mu outside everywhere and I can also take uh, lambda t to the power 3 outside. Okay. So, what I get in the first term is basically just uh, 1 minus 
mu over kt okay and uh, from the second term i'll get uh, minus 3 t over lambda t into derivative of lambda t. So, now lambda t is basically um, h over 1 upon square root of 2 pi m k b t. So, uh, this would simply be h over 2 pi m k b and uh, this would be just uh, you can get uh, 1 upon 2 raised to t raised to 3 by 2 okay so then i will have to uh, take in a few terms here and there so what i am going to do is basically knock off this t with 3 by 2 and so this will become uh, just uh, t raised to 1 half and uh, that would be nothing but uh, just uh, a lambda t in the numerator. So, that will cancel off with this term okay. and what I will have is just uh, 3 by 2 in the second term. So, this is just k b v e raise to beta mu upon lambda t to the power 3 and uh, this would be just uh, it will just give me 5 by 2 minus mu by k t ok. So, let us just uh, check if the expression is correct. So, now uh, let us uh, compute uh, the pressure we have already computed the pressure. So, let us compute the number of particles. So, this is the entropy that you have just computed and to compute the number of particles I have to take the derivative with respect to mu at constant v and t and uh, let us just uh, look at this expression for uh, g which is uh, minus k t v into so this is I believe negative derivative yes ok. So, this is basically negative derivative of uh, If you look at the expression, ok. 
okay. Fine. So, if you take this derivative, you get uh, k b t into v outside, no issues there. In fact, uh, what you will get is also lambda t to the power 3 outside and this would just give you e to the power beta mu into beta. So, which will cancel out with this k t. So, what you have for number of particles is just uh, uh, v over v into e raise to beta mu over lambda t to the power 3. Okay. So, that is uh, the uh, expression for the number of particles. So, this is just the entropy and this is the number of particles. So, with this uh, our uh, um, discussion of the classical ideal gas under a grand canonical ensemble comes to an end and this also ends our chapter 2 on classical statistical mechanics. So, when we meet in the next class we will uh, uh, start the discussion on quantum statistical mechanics. We will take a few important uh, cases of electrons in a gas. Uh, we also take uh, boson gases and uh, also electrons in a solid. So, we will take uh, some nice cases in quantum statistical mechanics and uh, you will also see how this uh, grand canonical ensemble becomes a natural distribution uh, or the natural ensemble to compute properties in quantum mechanics. So, we end it here and we begin the discussion on quantum statistics in the next lecture.